Good morning. Um, I'm going to be putting on some boots while I'm sitting here talking to you, trying to multitask. Um, just wanting to say, hope things are going well for you guys out there. Um, this is actually a day with no reporting, um, no hypnosis. Um, you'd think, oh, wow, Carrie, that sounds like a really fun day. <laughs> Except it's like, no, get used to this in the profession, um, unless you have an official ship where you can take time off. And I had an official ship and I still couldn't take time off because they didn't have enough people to back me up when I took time off. So I have learned that when you get a day off, you absolutely scrunch everything into that day off that you can, dental appointments, <clears throat> annual mammograms, I mean, anything you can. Um, and there seem to be more um, like service providers out there that understand that there are those of us who are entrepreneurs, I hate that word, um, who you know have to manage our time in a different way than, than other people. So why am I putting on boots? I'm actually going to a luncheon with three women, three of six that I was in a women's support group with this year. We met every Sunday night. Sometimes that was really hard. Sometimes it was wonderful, but um, for a while now, and um, we're having a women's empowering ceremony out. I mean, out like in, we're in the desert and it's going to be outside of Albuquerque. Um, anyway, they said, wear, wear layers, bring a shawl and a scarf. I don't know what that's about, but I have some, so okay. Um, and that'll be fun being, it's, it's different energy, you know, than we're used to, than I'm used to on an everyday basis with, um, attorneys. Um, some just weird things that came along. Um, one of our students, reporters is um, a retired, well, not retired, I don't know, an attorney from the Northern California area. And weirdness, she remembered me from a deposition that we took together, it must have been right before COVID, so probably 19, you know, 18 or 19. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I mean, I think that's just amazing, just phenomenal. She she described this scenario that we were there with a the videographer who was also a woman and that the witness didn't show up or something. And we all sat around just talking, waiting. And I remember that day and it was it was magical because how you know, how often does that happen? Um, yeah, he sees those things. So I'm really excited for her. Um and, and often I've thought, you know, I, any one of us, any one of us could have nothing disparaging to, to you, a, a Ms. Attorney out there, but any of us could have gone to law school and become an attorney. That's not that hard. You learn the stuff, you get a minimal passing grade, and you're an attorney. And we've seen them out there in practice and how kind of scary it is, the, the level of expertise or lack thereof. What we do is exponentially more difficult um, and it takes a special person. I actually had to call the bank last night about, um, I've been making so many charges on my card trying to up all my licenses before the end of the year and finish CEUs and all that kind of stuff um, that my bank put a hold on my card thinking it must be fraudulent stuff. And I'm like, no. So as I'm talking to the banker, and I told her, I said, well, that's NCRA. That's my national association. You declined my $300 to renew my membership. And she said, oh, you're a court reporter. I want to do that. And I thought, oh, dear God, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> but um, we need people out in the field who have the, the guts and the determination and the strength and the stamina and the backbone. And even if you don't start out that way, court reporting school will make you that way. It will hone you and forge you into a version of you that you never imagined existed within you. So anyway, I thought that was kind of hysterical, but um, I did give her my number and said, you know, before you sign up anywhere, give me a holler. You know, let's talk. Let's find the right school, the right fit, the right everything for you. Let's get you in the group early so that you can get out in Molly, Molly Cooper method time. Anyway, one thing I want to leave you guys with, which is actually the, the point of this video, but sometimes my videos sound pointless, but there's all kinds of points in them if you're paying attention or even if you're not. Um, the feelings in your body, you know, the anxiety, shit, panic, 
rushing emotions and and hormones and stuff that gets in our way of writing on the machine. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that on Saturday about the thoughts that create the feelings in our body that mess everything up when we're trying to write. Um, anyway, it, it occurred to me that most of you guys don't realize that that stuff, the thoughts in your head and the feelings, even the feelings in your body aren't you. Now, the thoughts in your head, that one I've had my my mind wrapped around, I love this, my mind wrapped around for a couple of years now. And that took some thinking, it took some doing, and it took some negotiating with that part of me that was just not going to have any of that. Oh, no, I'm you. I'm you. In fact, I might be God. You need to listen to me. You have to, because I chatter on incessantly, and I chatter faster in multiple voices sometimes than you could ever write on that little machine. I am the all-powerful thoughts in your head. Bullshit. They're just thoughts. It's a mechanism of the way your brain works. It's a tool that came on board when you were probably about seven, eight, or nine years old. So if it didn't exist before that, it's not you. How about that? <clears throat> and conversely, the feelings in your body, you weren't born like that. There Now, in some instances, there are people who are traumatized in utero, um, and that's a real thing. But even then, there are the other triggers and traumas and things that come along in life that download into your body because, frankly, you don't know how to process them and you, your body doesn't know what else to do with them. So it finds a place, you know, like over here in your sternum. And I've seriously got two trigger spots right on my the wing bones this back there, scapula. Um, and it feels like somebody said, oh, you're transforming. Those are like angel wings. And I'm like, I don't think so. It kind of, it kind of freaking hurts. And sometimes it like burns and tingles and, but there's something that's, I don't know, we'll get to it sooner or later. My job right now is to not fight it, not resist it, just observe it. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. How curious <laughs> going into that mode takes you first of all, out of victim um, mode and it puts you in a place of um, discovery and expanding and observing and growing and say and not being resistant that's the biggest thing and i'm going to try to give you guys some um better notions of approaching the feelings in your body um what they are why they are where they come from um if you've created them doesn't i hated that then you can uncreate them um, also, we all know how to get ourselves in a state of panic, um, even if everything's going wonderfully. All you got to do is think of a couple of scenarios um, that would really have, you think, an impact in your life immediately, um, and you're on, you're on the road to anxiety and panic meltdown. Those things are not you. Those things are not you. And so how do I know? Because you're observing them. You're observing it happening. You're observing the thoughts. You're observing the voice. And because you're observing it, it's at a distance. It's not you. You're not in it. It's not happening to you. It's happening in your body. That one's a little bit trickier, but it's still not you. It's Recon a reconstruction of chemical impulses going through your body to trigger, to alert you. It's triggering on something, which may or may not be materially important in your life right now. Was maybe at one point, may not be anymore. But it's trying to get your attention because it thinks it's not safe. So tell it you're safe. I've literally done this in a parking lot where I was having panic attacks and I Stop. I was like, stop, look around. I'm the adult in the body in control here. And I'm saying, stop it all. all. All of you, every part of me that's having a problem with this, look around. Do you see anybody with guns, with knives? Do you see anybody with bombs? Do you see anything overhead that looks like it's going to drop bombs? Is there an earthquake happening? Is there a tsunami nearby? Um, and go down the freaking checklist of the stupid shit that your brain thinks might be happening any minute now 
and tell it that's not happening. I'm in my car. I'm safe. I got keys. I got money. I got stuff. I got options. I've got a life. I have created a beautiful, safe life. Not safe from everything, but I'm aware I'm not asleep. And hopefully, you know, if I'm walking down the street, I'm going to do it in a safe way. So somebody doesn't sneak up behind me and I become unsafe. I'm safe in this moment right now, right here. I'm safe and not to fight the feeling that you're feeling, but talk through it. If you have to sit through it quietly, if you can, to just kind of feel it and be with it as if you were an adult holding a little kid that was terrified and not knowing what to say. So don't say, just be, just be there and hold that, hold that space until that feeling is ready to let go. They say that emotions only have a 60 to 90 second shelf life on their own before another thought joins them and re-triggers it. So the idea is to sit through the pain, the discomfort, the not feeling comfortable until it's ready to go. And I promise you when that one, if you can do that, when that one is gone, it will be gone that one will be gone. Now, my question to my therapist was, what about the other million ones? And she said, oh, they're there. But as you become approaching this in a way where you're not fighting it, you're accepting it, you're holding it, you're allowing it to process, you're allowing it to do the thing it was never allowed to do because of time constraints or being under um, a moment of feeling like you're just in survivorship. You're just in that have to survive mode um, and being a victim at a time in your life. And it couldn't process. And this is the processing process to just allow it to happen. We can do that in hypnosis. It's actually a little faster. We can get rid of a whole lot more of them in big chunks, but um, but you don't have to. That's the beauty of it. You're living your life every day. This stuff comes up every day. So deal with it every day. Deal with it when it comes up. Don't go, oh God, it's happening again. Because it is going to happen whether you say it's happening or not. Just take a deep breath and be aware. Oh, mm, oh, opportunity, opportunity. Okay, what did Carrie say? Take a deep breath. Feel inside your body. Let the air out. Let everything go that you don't need. Take another deep breath. Oxygen is our friend. And just what is the feeling I'm feeling? Where is it in my body? Is it my chest? Is it my stomach? Is it my back? Is it my arms? What does it feel like? Is it tingling? Is it hot? Is it surging? Is it just, oh, wow. I don't even know. It's kind of going away now. This is what started happening to me. I'm like, wait a minute. I got brave enough to face you, you little bastard. Now come back here and show me what you got. I want to learn what this feeling is. So I'm not afraid of it. I want to face it. So I'm not scared and I'm not resistant and I'm not pushing against you anymore. And the more I showed up, the less it showed up. You get really good at processing really quickly. And sometimes multiple things will come up at the same time. And you're making progress. And there will come a time, I swear to you, because I remember it had probably been six months and I remember just sitting quietly and going, oh, my God, I'm not waking up in a panic mode every morning all the time anymore. Oh, my God, I'm not having those flashes of anxiety out of nowhere every day anymore. When was the last time that happened? Whoa, mind boggling. You just gently evolve as you're letting go and you're processing things. And that stuff just doesn't happen anymore. And it, we can, we, for us doing steno and doing the tests and already being in a state of mm, anxiety, um, we need a faster way to process that stuff and to be able to get on top of it. So I leave you with that happy note. <laughs> go have an anxious free day. I'm going to try. Love you guys. And uh, I'll see some of you on Saturday. We'll record it. Love you. Bye.